What's going on YouTube? This is What Would Josh Do? And this is going to be my official review on the NVIDIA Shield tablet. Now, this device is pretty freaking awesome. Uh, I just so happened to have the 32 gig 4G LTE version. The way to indicate it by just looking at the tablet itself is by the fact that it has a SIM card slot. And on the 16 gig model, that SIM card slot is gone. You do not have it. So all you have is your little micro SD card slot and a placeholder for it, but you won't see SIM and it won't have a door. So this is the 32 gig LCE version. And if you're going to get the Shield tablet, I cannot stress how important it is to go ahead. And if you're going to spend $300 on the tablet, go ahead and save up a little bit more to get the 399 version, which has 32 gigs of storage and LTE. So uh, the reason being is an app like Real Racing 3 if we go to our app drawer here and we go to Real Racing 3, you're going to see just how big Real Racing 3 is on our device here. So it uses over 2 gigs of storage alone just from this game. And if we go to all of our apps here and we show you, you know, what we have, we don't have a lot installed yet because I did just get this device. I've had more than enough time with the Shield tablet and the Shield portable to give a fair review of the device. And if we sort by size here, you'll see that Real Racing 3 is our biggest game. If you have Need for Speed Most Wanted, that's almost 3 gigs. If you have... Um, instead of just talking, let me show you. This is a device with only 16 gigs. And as you can see, we're cutting it pretty close to how much storage we have left. And we have probably 20 or 30 gigs worth of games loaded on our 64 gig SanDisk Extreme Plus SD card, which is a very fast SD card. So games like Real Racing 3 and a lot of the other ones are on my SD card. For some reason, Most Wanted isn't reading correctly and some of these games are like double in size, but it should still give you an idea because realistically, if that was 9 gigs and that was 5 and that was 4, I would be over my 16 gigs. So, but Need for Speed Most Wanted is going to take about 2.7 to 3. You see how much Real Racing 3 is taking up here. Nova is going to take up a couple gigs. GTA takes takes up a couple gigs portal uh of course you're probably not gonna have gta san andreas uh the three the 10 year anniversary in vice city but half-life 2 gangster 4 blitz brigade anatomy 2 anatomy 2 modern combat 5 which is a pretty graphic intensive game uh, mass effect infiltrator uh, gt racing 2 dead space dead trigger 2 a lot of those games are absolutely ginormous and most of them are mo are over two gigs most of the time so if you get the 16 gig, you're going to find yourself absolutely having to move some of those games to your micro SD card. And some games like GTA, for example, they do not support moving to the SD card. You have to be rooted and you have to use an app such as Folder Mount, which I have a video on. If you have the 16 gig model, freaking watch my video on how to move apps to the external SD card. It's on the 16 gig shield tablet and I move huge games over to the SD card and I have a lot of internal state space free. So I'm talking fast here. I'm trying to get this review out there to you guys. So it's absolutely mandatory that you get the bigger version if you're a, get a person that plays games. And if you're getting the Shield tablet, you're probably getting something, getting this to play games with because it's got that Tager K1. And if you watch my playing GTA San Andreas on the Shield tablet with a MOGA controller, because I had not received this controller yet because it took a while to get it. Dude, I had the game absolutely maxed out. All settings maxed out and the game ran smoothly and there was never any lag or hiccups or stutters or anything. And I mean, <laughs> it's it's awesome. It's freaking awesome. So uh, this this thing is awesome. Let's talk about the controller for just a little bit. So you, so definitely, definitely, if, you, if you're going to spend $2.99, please save up for maybe a couple more weeks or however long it takes you and upgrade to the 32 gig. You're not going to regret it. And I can disconnect from my Wi-Fi and I'll be on AT&T's 4G LTE. Now this tablet claims to be unlocked. So you'll have to look at the bands and I show all of the bands in my unboxing of this 32 gig 4G LTE tablet. So make sure that the bands support for your carrier. Now we've updated all our apps here. So let's, let's disconnect from that. And let's connect to uh, LTE. It's going to take just a second to switch over. Right now we're on HSPA+. 
We don't get the, the best LTE signal here, but we do get a pretty good HSPA Plus signal. It will connect to LTE. In my unboxing of this tablet, I show the LTE speed tests. And for some reason, it's being a little bit uh, <laughs> of a pain and it's not going to LTE. But it does go to LTE and you can see that in my unboxing video. So let's connect back to Wi-Fi. That means, uh, like when I was waiting on my car to get the, an oil change, because uh, I, I have a new car and I'm not going to do it myself. I'm, I have to, to keep my warranty. I have to show receipts that I changed the oil. And instead of doing that, I just go to the dealer that I got the car and I get my oil change there. That way it's in their system that I got my oil changes and my warranty doesn't get messed up. Anyways, that's why I go somewhere instead of doing it myself. Oil's easy to change, trust me. But I was in there and I had my phone tethering to my tablet because of the fact that I had the Wi-Fi only model. And it's, I mean, it's very convenient and very nice having a tablet that's on LTE and not Wi-Fi. I can hand this to my daughter and she can watch Netflix in the back and not have to worry about my phone getting really, really hot tethering to her, you know, to the tablet. Now, if your phone has unlimited LTE and you're, then you get a plan that has limited LTE, then it might make a little more sense to tether, but now we're getting off topic here. <laughs> All right, so let's show you the controller real quick. And this is one thing I love. Uh, the Moga controllers take a while to connect. Like when you turn the controllers on, sometimes your phone or your tablet will say, hey, your Moga is connected. But a lot of times I found that I would actually have to open the Moga app up and I would have to force it to sync to my controller, which would be like a freaking minute and a half long process just to sync the controller up. And then if you leave the controller alone and you go get something to drink or eat or something and you come back, if your controller turned off, you have to go through that whole process of resyncing it. So it's definitely a pain. I much prefer this controller and you have the home, the start and the back button and you can long press that for Google Now. You can long press this to get to your um, game mapper. So if a game doesn't support the controller natively, you can map commands to work. And if you long press on this, it takes you to your Twitch. Now, please watch how long it takes. The moment I hit this button and I just rebooted this tablet, this has been off all night. I have not turned it on yet. You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Look how quick this happens. Press the button. Well, so I gotta do it. There we go, I press the button. Boom, dude, that takes like split freaking second. And you get a nice little indicator right there that tells you how much battery is left in your controller. I did let the controller charge last night and the tablet because I was playing a crap ton of Real Racing 3. But so if we long press on here, it brings up this little thing and we can enable comments and the comments will actually be like a little box. And it's really nice because when someone comments, it's this little bitty box that's translucent and you can change how... Uh, the opacity like how dark it is so you could if say your box is down here you can still see your icons and stuff and you can still interact with it so it's nice to have it smaller but you can see who's commenting on your live stream while you're playing the game and then you can turn your camera on and you got that five megapixel camera for streaming your your face if you want to the microphone you can either use the microphone on the tablet or it might use the microphone on here or you can plug in a headset and use a microphone on that. So you have tons and tons of choices. You have auto record, meaning that you can uh, just start it and it will capture everything you do, kind of like on Nvidia's GeForce things where you got the, you can go back and save something that happened instead of using a capture device, or you can manual record and start it. So that'll just create this really long file depending on how long you start recording. And this one will, every so often, it'll keep, you know, deleting, purging out the older stuff and recording the newer stuff. And you can get to your settings here. And with auto record, you can change that to record the last five minutes, the last 10 minutes, the last 20 minutes, or minute. And disable auto record on reboot or sleep. So we'll go back here. And normal orientation means if you start streaming in this mode right here, it will stay in that. If you're playing a game like Flappy Bird, like this, and you start it, your stream will be like this, which is actually kind of cool because you're holding this, and let me zoom out a little bit here, and then that front-facing camera is looking at you, and you can play uh, any, any normal Android app on the Google Play Store or Amazon App Store can be streamed and live streamed. So like I can play Hill Climb Racing and live stream. I can play Granny Smith and live stream. It's actually very, very cool. And you can choose landscape where it forces it in that mode when you're streaming or portrait, which is what we're holding it in. Now for the recording quality, 
uh, this ultra quality is 1080p. It captures your screen in 1080p, but you cannot live stream. Live stream. That's only if you're using the manual record or the auto record. So like the, you know, if you're playing a game for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, it's not making this huge file. It's only saving like the last 5, 10, or 20 minutes of your gameplay, depending on what you set it to. So high quality will let you stream at 720p. And for the simple indicators, if you do detailed, it'll tell you uh, if your microphone's broadcasting, if your webcam's broadcasting, if your uh uh, it'll tell you people are watching your stream. It'll even tell you how many frames per second it's capturing and streaming at and the quality, which is 720p on high. And you can change it to medium. If you're if you're using a game like Real Racing that demands a whole lot of power from the Shield tablet, then you're probably going to want to lower that to a lower quality so that way it doesn't freeze and stutter and lag because it's trying to stream it at a high quality when you're playing a game that's using a ton of your graphics and CPU and stuff. So that's what the detailed, simple indicators are. Microphones, just how loud it is. And to adjust the layout, you can actually change, like, this is the comments. And if we turn the controller on, and we, we can move the, uh, right here, we're moving it with the controller. So the, if, if there's something right here that you normally have to touch, you can move the chat to, like, at the top over here. Or you can bring it down here, bring it, you know, wherever you want in this little area. For the video, you can also do the same thing. You can bring it up and then bring it down. To resize it, you just click this and you can make it a bigger box or a really tiny box or medium or large. And it's the same thing with the comments. You can make this a bigger box or a really big box or a little box. And I like the little box because it gives you like three comments and it doesn't take up a whole lot of the room. But if you want more comments on there, like if you're a popular guy, which I'm not a popular guy on Twitch, I don't have that many followers. Uh, I just keep it nice and small. And also, you can press A to adjust the opacity, and you can make it darker, where now you can't see anything that's behind it, or you can make it lighter, where you can see the stuff behind it and still interact with it. Now, right now, it's just changing this because we're in that, but if it was on the screen, you'd be able to interact with what's behind it, and you would be able to see that unless you made it dark. So we can do it to the little icon here, too. So if we have a really big one, it's pitch black behind it. You can't see things behind it. So that's just a detailed thing of the Twitch app on here. So that's how you adjust the layout and do everything. So I have used this to live stream on my Twitch before. If you want to follow me, it's twitch.tv slash www.joshdew, just like my you know Twitter, Facebook, Google+, <laughs> YouTube, everything. So that's, that's that. Let's go ahead and back out of that and stop talking about that. Now, I don't have the... Uh, shield tablet cover at docs down here at the moment i do i did a video on it so you can watch the video if you want but we're going to use our little stand here that we got from moga and we're going to lower the camera all right so i wanted to go ahead and just play a game for you real quick and show you what it looks like this is real racing 3 there is an app called rr3 graphics which lets you change the quality of the game but i have not altered anything if you install Real Racing 3, this is what you're going to get. And I'm pretty sure it's set to a pretty good amount at first, uh, like uh, quality-wise, because it looks really good. So we'll just go ahead and go to a race here. I've been working on my Expert and then the Aston Martin Expedition. So let me just go ahead and hop in a car in a race here. And, you know, let me go back to it. I'm not going to finish a whole race. Let me get one that I've already done first in. And we'll go ahead and start a race here. And I'll just use the controller. This won't be long. I just wanted to show you this. Oh, that's something I forgot to talk about on the controller. You do have the volume buttons, which is really nice. If you're playing on your couch and you have this going to your TV, you can go ahead and just turn it up and down without actually going over to the tablet. So let's play some RR3 here, some Real Racing 3, and just show you. Now, this game actually does now support the controller, thank goodness. So, it's got full native support for the controller. So, as you can see, we're turning. I do have auto gas and brake. And I, I kind of, you know, I suck at measuring when I need to stop. Like, I'll try to stop and I'll do it way, way early or way too late and crash. So, I do have the all the assists on at their maximum setting. So, all I pretty much got to do is steer the car and it does everything else for me. You can use the brake by hitting the trigger here, but again, I just I have all this stuff set. So the game looks absolutely beautiful on this 1080p screen. No complaints there. It looks freaking nice. 
and we're just going to go ahead and finish this race up real quick. This won't take too long, and you'll get a good idea of how it performs. I don't know if I'll beat my time. Did I beat it? I don't know. Okay, I didn't beat it. But there you have it. That's Real Racing 3. Uh, if you want to see GTA on maximum settings and everything, just head over to my GTA San Andreas Moga controller video. I'll try to merge the link to it in the description, or you can just search WWJoshDEW Shield Tablet and watch it yourself. Uh, one more game I want to go ahead and demo is a game called Bomb Squad. One nice thing is you can hit this little button here, and it'll take you to this little section here. And you can go by like the most popular and you can see what people are playing like uh, Portal and GTA Vice City and Half-Life, which all those run pretty good on here. And the Bomb Squad is one of the ones I saw and I was like, ooh, I'm going to try that out. But you can go to all games and you can go to family and you can go to card and board and then you can head over to racing or simulation, puzzle, first person shooter. Um, Modern Combat 5, Dead Trigger 2, and then Racing. And it, it just, it's just a really, really cool layout of all the apps. And these are apps you may have, may have never heard of. And you're like, ooh, I want to try these. You can go to What's New and see what's new to play. Looks like they have Final Fantasy on there. Uh, not a fan of that. Never really got into it, but that's just me. I have a lot of friends that loved Final Fantasy. So for Shield, you can click on Shield Tablet, Shield Portable, the wireless controller, or Shield Accessories. So this is this is really really cool and oh yeah if you click on a game it'll tell you full controller support if it says partial that means that it's a game that uh, it uses the mapper mode where you hold down start and you choose edit mapper and then you can go up here and customize what you like it now if it's a game like Granny Smith for example you'll hit this little download button and then it will give you all the layouts that people have set and some will have reviews. I usually typically go by the one with the best review or the most downloads, and that's the one you choose. Or you can sit there and drop stuff on the screen and customize it the way you like it. You can resize it, make it bigger, make it smaller. There's a ton of options here. So this game mapper mode is simply awesome. It makes it makes games where the controller is not officially supported, supported. And it's it's nice. Real Racing 3, I had to use the that mapper mode to play the game at first because it wasn't supported by default and now it is thanks to the real racing 3 app updating and saying hey now we support controllers so the performance in this thing is top notch games run at their absolute maximum setting there's some games that only support the shield tablet there's some games that support like the shield portable that also support the shield tablet now one nice thing about the shield portable versus the shield tablet is this thing can simply go in your pocket and you can flip the screen open and play a game and you don't have to charge the tablet and the controller separately and you, this can be in your lap on a car trip and you're just you know going and playing games and doing stuff you do on your shield here and it runs android just like this does so you could have you know like speed view right here where it's telling you how fast you're going down the road with your gps and if you have the lte model you can browse the web Using this 1080p screen, you can watch YouTube videos in 1080p. Dude, I'm telling you, this device is pretty freaking awesome. And I am definitely in love with both of these. This one does have the fan. Oh, I, this is, I'm glad I remembered this. I, I get off topic real easy. I'm, I do apologize. It's just something I have dealt with my whole life. So sorry about that. But this is a fan to cool it down. So this thing does not get that hot. I have posted pictures on either my Twitter or my Instagram. I can't remember. I think it was my Instagram. This thing gets in access of 114 degrees when you're playing games like Real Racing 3, for example. If you're playing a game that uses a ton of the horsepower from the tablet, this thing is going to get incredibly hot. And then you can sit there and pretty much watch your battery train and go down. It lasts like maybe a couple hours of playing Real Racing 3, probably a little bit less than that. To be honest, a lot of times I've noticed the battery going down to like where it's hitting, it's fixing to turn red, so I'll just go ahead and plug it in. And that's another thing to talk about real quick, is the fact that while you're charging it, dude, this thing cannot, like... If you're playing Real Racing 3 on its highest settings, you're going to notice that you don't ever actually get your battery full. It, it, it struggles to even keep it at the same charge 
that it's like, so if you're playing at 93% and you're playing Real Racing 3 or GTA on the max settings or, or a game that uses a lot of the shield's power, you're going to notice that this light doesn't turn green because it's not, it's not going to fully charge until you turn a screen off and you, or, or you pause and stop playing the game. So it, it, it can't do it. And it, you'll actually see the battery die. I haven't had it plugged in and then seen it die all the way, but you can definitely tell that it is going down. The HDMI port has been very useful. I hook it up to my TV and it'll pop up two options that say screen mirror where you have black bars on your TV, but you can see this screen and still interact with it. Or you can choose game mode where it spits out a perfect 1080p screen with uh, these are gone, the sides will be gone on your TV, and this screen will be off. So what I recommend doing is going down to your developer options right here and then clicking show touches right here. So when your screen's black and you're not knowing where you're touching, you can actually have this little thing right here and you'll see that on the screen on the TV and you'll know, okay, I'm getting a little bit closer to this right here and then you tap on it. So I recommend enabling show touches or you can just use the little mouse thing on your and while you're watching it on your TV, you can click stuff like Greenify, for example, we'll press down on this and it launches the apps that I have hibernated and stuff. So the HDMI port's very useful if you want to play on your TV and with no black bars. The speakers are very good. It's got front-facing speakers. Uh, no complaints at all. They're actually pretty loud. And you've got little bass ports on each side. So it's got dual stereo speakers. No complaints there at all. And then you have your 3.5 millimeter headphone jack if you want to hook up some headphones or something. And that is one of the last things I think I want to talk about is just like the Roku 3. And I've talked about this before, but I'll say it again in this review in case you haven't seen my other videos. You can have your headset plugged in. I did it just the other day. You have this going to your TV. This screen's off. That's near your TV. You've got this on the couch. And you don't want to have your TV up real loud because your kid's sleeping or your spouse or someone's sleeping so you hook your headphones in and you can hear the audio that's coming from your tv on here it's very very nice i am i love this thing this controller itself is awesome and if you don't get this and you get this uh you can sync these two together and the benefit of that, which is something else I've talked about, but I'll go ahead and say it again real quick, is you can have this hooked up to your TV in game mode, the same way that does, where it turns the screen off on here and it outputs a perfect 1080p screen with no bars or anything like that. And you can have this with the little three foot or whatever foot cable going to your TV closed over there and your TV's over there and you can sit there and play with this on here so you're watching your tv and this is out this is happening your tv you're watching your tv but you don't have a 10 foot cable going all the way to your couch so you can play like this well i mean you gotta open the screen up so you can play like this while looking at your tv that's over there you just put that right there and then you play with this so even if you get the shield portable this is still something you can get later on in the future and if you hook this up to a TV, there are some games that support the Shield tablet that will also support two players playing simultaneously. So you can actually have somebody with this controller and then somebody using this while you're looking at the big TV that's in front of you. There's a ton of uses for this. This device is pretty freaking awesome and I can't stress it enough. If you're going to get the th if you're going to get this thing, save up. Save up your money, spend a hundred more dollars. You're already going to spend 300, spend the extra 100 to get the $400 version and be able to be on a trip, turn your Wi-Fi, not have Wi-Fi on. Of course, uh, wi it does use Wi-Fi to sync the controllers. So if you turn that off, it's the controller is not going to work. But um, even if, okay, and this is something to cover. Even if you're somewhere where you don't have a Wi-Fi signal, this still connects to it because it's Wi-Fi direct. You don't actually have to have a router for these two to talk to each other. So you can turn your Wi-Fi off and not be connected to anything and the controller will still work because the, it's a direct connect connection between the two devices. And there's uh, there's no lag at all. It's pretty freaking awesome. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. I talked about pretty much everything that was important to me and a lot of the sp you know, specific features of the Shield tablet, the streaming, the controller, Twitch, uh, game mode, I mean, also a little bit of comparison to the Shield Portable, 
Uh, please, if you enjoyed it, give the video a thumbs up. I would greatly appreciate it. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't already and you're new here. You will get notified when I post future videos. We are getting the Nexus 6, Nexus 9, and the Nexus Player. So those videos are coming if you want to see those. Again, please subscribe if you haven't already. Please follow me on Twitter and Instagram. I tweeted a whole bunch about the Nexus 6, Nexus 9, and Nexus Player that were all announced today. So lots of awesome things coming. Uh, I don't know when I'll post this video, but eventually I will. Today is October 15th at 12.58. This, it might be October 20th when I post this. It might be tonight. It might be tomorrow. I don't know. But... There it is. This is What Would Josh Do? And I'm out.